Timely, insightful, discussion and analysis of economic trends and markets. From Southern California to Sacramento, featuring business and political leaders, unique field reports. From Orange County and the campus of Chapman University, this is the Chapman Business Report. Welcome back to the Chapman Business Report. I'm Pete Weitzner. I head up the broadcast journalism program at Chapman University, but we're not on campus where we usually shoot the show with Dr. S.E. Adibi, the boss, my major domo here. We're here at the Segerstrom Center for the Arts because Dr. Adibi and Dr. Doty will present their annual economic forecast. 35 years, but maybe these as important as, as any uh, presented, because for the most part, especially on the regional forecast, there have been pretty good times in Southern California. Not uh, now. Uh, not, not now. Actually, uh, you know, this was one of the most difficult forecasts that we're, we're doing. You know, over the 35 years, there were two or three years that we, we were facing a bunch of uncertainties. Uh, for example, in 2008, we were worried about mostly a stimulus, deep recession. Right. And now we're worried about this fiscal cliff, which is going to impact the national economy. But we are not immune. If national economy starts sinking, that's going to impact the local economy, too. And we had to make a bunch of assumptions as the outcome of the fiscal cliff. So if Speaker Boehner, President Obama, his economic advisors were consulting with Dr. Adibi. I would have said just get it over with as fast as well, you can. Well, but if they get it yeah. over with with $500 billion of cuts in spending and increased taxes, uh, that won't be good. They're smart. They know that uh, the economy, you know, if, if, for audience, uh, I mean, everybody knows now of fiscal cliff. But we're talking about between $500 billion to $600 billion of combination of tax increases and right. spending cut. No economy, even our economy with our size, can absorb that's that much. 3% of our economy, that's, right? That's a huge number. We cannot More. absorb all of that in one year. So should we just let it go and don't deal with it, or should we do something? Yes, we should do something, but we have to keep in mind that we can't do everything in such a short period of time. So the assumption that we made, we went through all the items that are there. You know, there's an automatic cut of about $110 billion. There's an increase, you know, on payroll taxes, you and I. About hundred ten billion dollars, two percent, two percent, back to what it used to be. Exactly, four point two to six point two. Then uh, these are just under taxes, uh, excluding Bush's tax cut. If Bush's tax cut expires, the entire package expires. That would be a huge impact, not only on taxes on all of us. Estate taxes are going to get impacted. Alternative minimum taxes, depreciation for businesses. So you can't do all of this. I mean, let it let it go. We can't fall off the cliff. So we went through all the items and basically we made our own you know, assessment of what can be absorbed in a reasonable fashion. And we came out about $200 billion uh, rather than 600. So when you take $200 billion out of the economy, combination of tax increases and a spending cut, then somehow, somewhere, we have to make up for it at the national level before we come to the local level. Then when we look at the national level, where is going to be the engine, you know, which is going to really bring about that $200 billion off, make an offset. And keep us at, I don't want to steal the lead here, but keep us at, say, a couple of percent growth. Exactly. You, you can't expect, black. exactly, you don't, avoiding recession, turning negative numbers on GDP. And the only thing that is really working right now is the housing market. You know, interestingly, how things, change. how things have changed, partly because there is a demand out there, pent up demand. Home prices are stabilizing and affordability is extremely favorable because of low mortgage environment. So there is a demand coming for housing, you know, to purchase home or even rent because household formation is taking place. That is inducing more housing construction at national level and local level. So that would be something that is going to help us. And believe it or not, we think consumers are going to continue to spend. So not much, but they're going to continue to increase the spending. The, so the con most recent confidence figures suggest that they will. November 73.7, 90 yeah, is very healthy, yes, but that's yes. the highest in four years. Highest in Consumers four years. Consumers aren't worried about yeah, the fiscal cliff. Yeah, and we do it for California, by the way, and the numbers we better. released last yeah. quarter, yes, was the best over five years. Now, what is happening there is a combination of factors that consumers' mood is changing and becoming favorable. Yes, I'm sure most of them are aware of higher taxes that may kick in, but they look at job creation is helping. They're getting more secure about their job. Their income is a little bit increasing. Then you know, they look at two factors, the stock market at their home prices. Home prices are stabilizing and showing a little bit of an upward move. The stock market so far has done well in spite of, you know, recent 
2012 you know, was flat. Uh, but it's still, you know, we came from right. Dow being at 6,500 to where we are now. So when you look at the combination of improvement in the stock market and housing market, that's what we call wealth effect. Plus, people have pared down their debt, so there's now some room. A little room for spending, and there's a pent-up demand. You know, people who did not spend during recession, now they're catching up a little bit. So all of that should help consumer spending to, to continue to grow. Not huge number, right. like 1.8%. So when you put the consumers in housing against what's going to come from fiscal cliff, we think the growth rate at the national level is going to run about 2, 2.1% this year. I mean, coming year. But compared to this year, it's going to be weaker. This year, our estimate is, by the way, our forecast was bullseye. <laughs> we, we forecasted 2.3% growth for this year, 2012, and it looks like that's, going, that's going, what's going to be. If the fourth quarter comes in at... What's going to happen? The third quarter number is going to come stronger. It's going to come, rather than 2%, closer to 3%. Okay. The fourth quarter is going to be somewhat weaker than what we anticipated, but these two are going to offset. I think pretty pretty much for the entire year is going to be 2.3%. So, and next year is going to be 2.1%. So remember, national economy is weakening a little bit. And then we look at the export market, which we don't see that's going to be a major play for us. You know, the weakness in Europe, Asia, so that's not going to be a big, big factor. And again, when you blend everything, national economy 2.1%, and that kicks in into our local model which forecasts more or less job creation right. at the state level and, and Orange County uh, in particular. Uh, now you can almost guess what the forecast is going to be for the state and, and Orange County. It's not going to be much different than 2012. Growth rate in Orange County for example was 1.8 percent. On payroll jobs. On payroll job. People who receive paycheck right. not self-employed. And then California was about 1.7 percent this year. We believe that's what's going to be. Roughly, you could expect the same type of job creation next year, 1.8. Actually, a little better than Orange the nation, County. right? A little better than the nation. But remember, we, Orange County and California underperformed the nation for almost yeah, three, well, four years. And I mean, California still third highest unemployment rate, 10.1 percent yeah. in the country. Yeah. Only so, Rhode Island and Nevada. So right. even if you take, let's say, just concentrate on the state, 1.8 percent or 1.7 percent, I mean, these are small deviation. That means about 230 40,000 jobs next year, about 230,000, 40 this year, and about 150 the year before that. If you put all of that together, you're we're talking about, home. we're about 600,000 jobs. You know? We lost a million too? What, almost. So you could see we still have a long way to go to get all those jobs back and at the same time to bring unemployment down significantly. It's going to go down, you know, but every right. time tenths of a point, two tenths of a point, not half or one percentage point. So we still Orange have problems. the same, then about 25, 27,000 jobs, exactly. we're at 7.8, 7.9% unemployment. Uh, might work its way down towards seven by the end of the year? Yes, it might. It depends what's important there. See, we're talking about payroll jobs. These are people who are getting jobs with corporations getting paycheck. Always you get some self-employment going with it. You know, entrepreneurs start their own businesses, small businesses are being formed. So when you put all of that together, that what we call civilian employment, which is paycheck, self-employed, we think we're gonna get closer to 7%. But it's still, you know, those, if you remember, Orange County's unemployment rate was roughly about 4%. Yeah. It was, yeah. then, but at, at our Nader, we hit 10%. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so what are the engines here in, in California and in Southern California and Orange County? What the same the story, more or less like national. The housing is coming back. You know, it, we used to build home, home builders building, home not just people uh, buying more home. We know you put a home on the market these days. If you're in that move, slight move up or entry level, you're getting multiple oh, offers. Oh, it goes quickly. But, but you see construction, but which construction, is important. That's important. See, when when we talk about economic activity, if you buy my home or I buy your home. It's not going to do anything. Yes, a couple of re realtors are going right. to make money. And you'll buy and, some uh, grapes. Yes, <laughs> and buy <laughs> grapes or shutters. He's grape shopping now. <laughs> so, uh, economic activity depends very much on building a home. Sure. Uh, whether it's apartment or, or townhome or single family, it's, it's irrelevant. like three jobs per home, right? It's, 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 it has a strong multiplier yeah. because when you build a new home, you can imagine, even after you're finished, you know, the, it helps a whole bunch of other industries, you know, retail, you know and also landscapers, you know, patio cover. Anyway, when you look at that, we're coming up at the trough, Orange County, for example, we were building 2,200 homes. Now we expect next year that number is going to be 6,800. Now, 
of course, again, when you put things in historical perspective, it's nothing like what happened, you know, in what, 07, what, what did we build? Yeah. Oh, we were building about 10,000 in Orange County, about 200,000 in California at the peak. So now we're talking well, about... 6,800 uh, isn't a bad number. Not for Orange County, but yeah. if you look at the state, right. we're talking about 60,000 home versus 200,000 right. home. But nonetheless, that is going to be one force that is going to help. So the shadow the, the inventory economy. must be gone then, huh? Shadow inventory, we're not worried about it, actually. Let me, let me just again backtrack. Well, builders are building, mostly they're building apartment, and the apartment, the reason they're building, because rents have gone up. Record high. Record high, 1,600 bucks now for a two bedroom, one bath, which used to be under 1,400. So it's a huge increase over a short period of time. And when you look at the affordability to buy a home, especially as you mentioned, for first time home buyers, versus renting, you know, it's tilting now. It's tilting back again to purchase rather than rent. Yeah. So that's helpful. Now. You might say, or one of our audience would say, oh, if you're building more homes then, that's increasing supply, that's going to impact home prices. But see, you have to put the whole thing together to come up with home prices. What are the elements there? One is housing demand, which is improving. The other one is supply of new homes, which is increasing. That's kind of negative for home prices. But when you look at the resale home prices, uh, uh, inventory has shrunk significantly and shadow inventory you know, it's funny, last December when we were taping this show, people were talking about tsunami of foreclosures and and we said we don't see it. And the reason we didn't see it because we knew home prices are stabilizing, that's going to bring some buyers. And secondly, financial institutions now are much stronger than what they were three years ago. They have more allowance for losses. Their capital is shored up, is stronger. So what they're doing rather than foreclosing or going through short sale, they're working with present homeowners, whether reducing interest rate or even in some cases reducing principal. So when you look at notice of default, for example, in eight different areas of California, the biggest, largest one, they have dropped by almost 30%. And that's a prelude for foreclosure and short sales. So we think inventory is, is not going to spike up because of foreclosure short sale. And as a result, combination of higher demand, little more new homes, and not much resale, we think home prices are going to be decent next year, actually going up by about 6%. Our real estate friend, Phil Immel, the real estate guru, told me something like in the million dollar range, there was like, it's the handful of homes that yeah. were on the market. It's yeah. a handful. Yeah. Like that's actually, that is very interesting because last December, if you recall, we said, home prices have bottomed out four prices below median. So we knew that homes that are priced below median are going to go fast. And again, our reasoning was uh, better job market and sure. affordability. But what has happened, and this is what Felt probably is, is, is referring to, that even on the high end of the market now, we're seeing some movement and inventory is shrinking. And the reason is because some of the move up you know, people who, who are able now to sell their home, probably they all, always wanted to move to a bigger home, bigger right. neighborhood. They're coming to the marketplace. So overall, the housing market is, is on the right path. Having said this, though, I, I, again, uh, barring any unexpected, I mean, there, there could be if, if, like going back again to fiscal cliff, if something much more significant happens in terms of drag on the economy, if job creation is not going to materialize as we forecast about 1.8%, all of that is going to work negative. And another factor that people should remember, it's going to take us a long time to go back to peak home prices, sure. so we're which up was about, 2006. Yeah. We're up yeah. about, the, the bottom on the median was I think 365. Yeah. We're closing in on about, say, 465, yeah. but 645 is the old Orange County was 775. Uh, for, a, for, a, okay. for a single for family resale, home. Right, for right. a single family right. home. So yeah. we have a long way to go. So I, and, and we always say to people, you never buy your first home or what you want to live in. Uh, you have to have a long-term perspective. Right. You don't buy it for investment purposes. And this is something that we always warn people. Don't buy principal residence to live in it and expect to make money out of it. I mean, investment in real estate is good, but sometimes you're better off if you want to just do investment to buy a yeah. rental property because you get depreciation and all tax consequences. Uh, my housing aside, and I, and I know you're bullish here in Orange County talking to Reggie Gilliard in our, our prior show, New Dean at the Ardra School of Business and Economics. On leisure and hospitality sector here in Orange County, medical instruments always, health, overall health care. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But um, all that aside, I know you have concerns for the state and of course 
all 58 counties within the state because we just raised taxes. Again. Yes, that's, that's our fundamental problem, and it's kind of a pity. First of all, when we look at the job growth, which sectors are going to benefit? I mean, the good news is hmm. almost every sector is going to show a little bit of a job growth, even government sector, and the reason being... Manufacturing can... Except, oh. very good point. Manufacturing is going to stay flat or even lose a little bit of a job. But if you look at all the other sectors, they're going to gain some, and including a state and local government, because... I'm going to show during our presentation, and um, I want to echo that, with increasing taxes now, state budget situation has improved significantly. They're going to have surpluses moving forward, you know, huge surpluses on operating surplus. Now, that you would say, okay, good news, we're not going to hear about deficit again over and over, but somebody's paying for it. <laughs> and we're forgetting that you increase sales tax. I mean, our sales tax now, the minimum sales tax, that we have to pay in all the counties in California is 7.5%. That's a minimum state. But then on the top of that, there are local taxes, right. which in our case in Orange County is going to be 8%. In some areas of the state, sales tax is going to go as high as 10%. Right, LA's got another that. half cent on their ballot. Oh, oh yeah, San March. Francisco is, well, and you're right, and they want to add another half a percent. On the, on the income tax, the highest marginal tax is going to be 13.3%. And when you look at our neighboring estates, for example, Texas, you know, no income tax. Closer uh, when Nevada, you look zero. At Nevada, Washington, the state of Washington, zero. I mean, you would look, if you look at the dynamic analysis, the, not just a static, okay, we raise taxes, we collect that much money, but is the tax base is going to shrink? If people on that high income that are exposed to 13.3, now you might say those are people who make more than $5 million. By the way, retroactive to 2012. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a done deal. Now. These people, are they going to stay here? I mean, if I were one of them, I would seriously <coughs> consider to do something different. No, and and if we lose these people, you can imagine. And we've been losing these people. Oh, we, we've been losing these people, and nobody wants to, to accept it. If you lose those people over long run, sure, you raise taxes and you save the problem. If you don't address the issue of government spending and our tax revenue and make fundamental changes, this problem is going to be with us for a long time. We solve the problem now. I assure you, next cycle, you're going to again hear about chronic budget deficit. We need to make fundamental changes, and unfortunately, we're not doing it. And we don't actually consider the consequences of these higher taxes over the long run as, as what's going to happen to the state. I mean, the state is not as friendly as it used to be, not, not only on the business front, <laughs> even on, on living here as a retiree, for example. Somebody who retires here facing huge you know, taxes on every front, I mean, I don't know why they want to stay here. They're smarter to go somewhere else. So all of these things, uh, they're going to make us worried. But speaking of short term, yes, 2013, right. I think government sector is going to do fine. Along with all the other sectors, manufacturing is, is going to be the only one that is going to go through some pause. But the, the upshot is enjoy the little housing resurgence and, and continue to slight expansion in the economy for the next couple of years, but long term, doesn't sound like a, a good place to relocate your business or start your business. No, just, just uh, let me give you another piece of a statistic. We live with these statistics. If you look at since 1990, which is almost 21 years, 22 years of data, and look at the job growth from 1990, which we had recession, up to now, I mean, it's surprising to see that the U.S. job growth overall was 20% over this entire period. California job growth, 12.6%. So California is clearly underperforming the U.S. economy. Now, of course, somebody would say, oh, we had bad recessions. But no, we had some good years, too, when yeah. the tech industry was booming and we had comparative advantage. We generated a bunch of jobs. But when you put all of this, offset everything, and look at two points, 1990 to 2011, if you're doing 12.6% versus nation 20%, there's something wrong. Well, I just look, I look at, <laughs> nearby, I look at the entertainment industry in Los Angeles County, yeah. and it's lost, I think, about something like 15% of its jobs. Yeah, it's and getting too expensive to operate here. And the other and state, New York is gaining. New York's a high-tax <laughs> state, we, we know, but they, they have incentives. Yeah, they do. They give Michigan them does, Louisiana Canada, does, Canada, Canada, Canada does. Yeah, so, see, we, we cannot just live in vacuum, and unfortunately, sometimes when we look at our action, it seems like we're in vacuum. We don't see anything else, what's happening to neighboring states. What's happening on our comparative advantage side? And if we don't have that in mind, believe me, the next cycle, next recession, which is going to come, is inevitable. The problem is going to be bigger, even bigger than what it is or what it was, you know, this cycle.
Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll finish off with even the shortest term. Is it going to be a better holiday shopping season, you think? Yes, than I believe so. You Actually, do. yes. The forecasts were for you know, yeah, increase, yeah, but yeah. not like last year. Yeah, we estimated that about a month ago, and we saw California should do about 4%, Orange County about 5%, and now, if Black Friday is any indication, it could be even better than 5% well, for Orange County. Well, they say the County. stores were, and they say yeah, the internet yeah, shopping yeah, was great yeah, on yeah, Cyber yeah. Monday, but they yeah. say the stores were crowded, but it looked like the people were buying. Yeah, yeah, buying. I think it's going to be 5%, uh, and, and the reason, again, goes back to some of the elements that I mentioned. Some of it is pent-up demand. Some of it is secure job security. Some of it is little income increase. Some of it is a stock market. Some of it is a housing right. market that, you know, is funny. And everybody People has look to have at, an iPad. <laughs> and everybody <laughs> has to have an iPad, a mini iPad yeah. now to replace it, to get a smaller one. So I think it's going to be a decent holiday season. But the worry, again, is come January 1st, when people see shrinkage in their paycheck, how are they going to behave? And that's that's our worry and concern. Well, maybe that won't be part of the fiscal club <laughs> yeah, negotiations. Yeah, let's see. Let's back see. with our fine student feature story, Mandy Ortiz went to the Miramar Air Show. We'll take a look at that when we get back with Dr. Adibi on our special shows from the Siegelstrom uh, Center on the Chapman Business Report. As a project coordinator at the Newport Beach office of Taylor, I see the impact that my work has on the community, and I know I can do more. When I won the Tomorrow's Leader Scholarship, I was very fortunate that my company has been very supportive of me pursuing my MBA. MBA graduates in Orange County have a lot of opportunity because Orange County is so diverse and so connected that you have limitless options. Being a great leader is being able to identify people's strengths within your team and allowing them to contribute using those strengths. The Chapman University Tomorrow's Leaders Scholarship provides me the opportunity to do more. By pursuing my MBA at Chapman, I have become part of a larger network of emerging leaders. Join me in becoming one of Tomorrow's Leaders. Together, we'll build a better future. Follow your dreams. Chapman University. Take your life to new heights. Chapman University. Invest your humanity. Lead. Mandy Ortiz is a great one of our uh, broadcast journalism students. Had a great look at this year's Miramar Air Show. I'm here at the 2012 MCAS Miramar Air Show celebrating the 237th birthday of the United States Navy. Spectators are filing in from all around to enjoy the exhibits, food, and of course, the finest pilots in the sky. The annual air show offers demonstrations of the aircraft and techniques used by our military during combat. The half helicopter, half airplane Osprey, refueling an aircraft while in midair, and the air ground assault demo, demonstrating the Marines' ability to defend our nation faster than the speed of sound. The demonstrations reinvent pride in the men and women who have routinely deployed to preserve the freedoms we enjoy every day. And with a half a million spectators in attendance over the course of the weekend, at one of the largest air shows in the world, there is one thing that a naval birthday celebration isn't complete without. My favorite part is the Blue Angels. Definitely the Blue Angels. The Blue Angels are always a big, big highlight in my book. They're the best. The Blue Angels are the Navy's elite flying group, developed in 1946 to keep the public interested in naval aviation, and have since performed for 483 million fans. Their famous diamond formation, just 36 inches from one another. Close together, very fast, awesome. Fans come for the thrilling and precise maneuvers only the Navy's finest attempt at 650 miles per hour. And thousands of people came out here today to see the Blue Angels, and as you can see, they weren't disappointed. I'm Mandy Ortiz reporting from Miramar, California, Chapman News. SEDB, this is a, a busy, busy day for you, so I thank you very much thank for coming you. by the 35th annual Chapman Economic Forecast. If you've never gotten a chance to take it in, well, you can watch our show and see it online, but if you ever get a chance to take it in live, it's actually very entertaining. <laughs> and this year, the numbers, okay. Uh, okay. Just okay. 
Thank you very much for watching the Chapman Business Report. My thanks to Jeff Cole, uh, Jeff Cole Productions, Class of 2001, and his terrific crew for building the set and putting, us, putting on our show. Have a great new year. Funding for this program was provided by Chapman University.